to the cloud. And we should be recording. Good. Excellent. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the July 14, 2020 meeting of the Wethersfield Historic District Commission. For those who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and then the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give you the opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings at this time. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting, which follows the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, which follows the public hearing, but need not do so. The results of tonight's public meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow morning at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Raymond, to read the legal notice. Excuse me. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, July 14th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking certificates of appropriateness. Application number 5024-20, Spencer Maher seeking to replace windows in home with Marvin Elevate windows at 26 Willard Street. Application number 5025-20, Kurt Johnson seeking to install certain teed cedar impression vinyl siding and wrap all trim with aluminum at 8 Rainer Lane. Application number 5026-20. Edward Del Mastro seeking to construct a 24 foot by 24 foot wood garage in the rear of yard at 167 Church Street. Application number 5027-20. Paul Lucella seeking to install a 54 inch high black aluminum fence to surround in-ground pool and rear of yard at 32 Hartford Ave. Application number 5028-20, Tom Derrick, seeking to replace railings on front porch with wood railings, replace windows in home with Harvey Majesty windows, replace front door, front steps, and gutters install garage and shed in the rear yard at 18 Willard Street. Application number 5029-20, Sandra Stavola, seeking to install board and batten style vinyl siding on garage, repair vinyl siding on rear of home to match existing, replace garage windows with Harvey Majesty windows at 157 Broad Street. Application number 5030-20, Mary Lou Kramer, seeking to replace vinyl siding with ply gem carb, carved wood vinyl siding in English Wedgwood color, install cupola on garage roof at 21 Howard Avenue. If you wish to review the applicants on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldconnecticut.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent by phone 
for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated Wethersfield, Connecticut, this 29th day of June, 2020. Thank you very much, Mark. So let's begin with application number 50 dash, I'm sorry, 5024-20. This is the project at 26 Willard Street. Do we have a representative of the applicant or the applicant here today? Yes, it's uh, Spencer Marr and my wife Gail Pollock are here. That's great, good to see you again. And your residence at that address, correct? Yes, we are. Thank you. So uh, what would you like to let us know about this project in addition to what you already submitted in terms of paperwork? Uh, it's, it's not too complicated. We just wanted, we just would like to get rid of the old deteriorating windows, uh, on, at least on one side of the house right now. I, we, we don't have the budget to do the entire house. Uh, but we want to start with uh, the side that's the most affected by the elements right now. Um, but there's nothing really changing. It's they're actually going to look a lot better than the original ones that are the, the what do you call it? The glazing is starting to deteriorate and fall out. So, but the, they're going to match what we did on the 2008 edition, like I said, and um, and they also look like our our shed out back too. So they're we're making it more consistent. If anything, it's just. It's getting to the time where it needs to get done uh, for efficiency of losing heat and everything. So, but. Thank you for letting us know. At this point, I would like to just ask Kim. Uh, Kim, was there any uh, information from the uh, earlier approval for the addition that uh, would give us any guidance here? I, um, I can look. I was unaware that there was an addition that had them. So. I, um, while you're talking, I will go and look. Sure. I know that uh, you said you only wanted to do the one side for now, but you were seeking approval for all of them. So I just want to clarify for our record, uh, what is your plan for light divisions? Will they match the existing in all locations? That, that, that's the plan to match what we have existing. Um, the, the downstairs has got a uh, 16 light and, um, I believe the upstairs is, I think it's um, uh, 12, 12 light, I think upstairs, yeah. But we'll match the same uh, on, on everything that we can possibly match the same. Your picture window has four over fours on the side and then the picture window also has divisions. Is it um, your proposal to replicate the divisions on the picture window when it comes time? So the picture window, I mean the big one in our living room, is that yes. what I'm guessing? Yeah, that one we actually probably will leave for now because it's um, it's in good condition, okay. and that would be a that one would be a huge expense. The, will you replace the two side windows to it and just retain the center, or you'll leave the entire unit? So right now we would, yeah, we would leave the unit until we were prepared to do the entire. Right. We want to approve everything together as one package. So right. a year from now, if you have the budget for it, you don't have to come back. So I just am trying to nail down, will it be the same light divisions as exist, including the light divisions on the picture window? That would be the plan. Anything that we would do, we would plan to do to look exactly as it currently is. Okay. Remember, if there are, uh, if you do change your mind about that, uh, to contact the coordinator so that a modification request can be made. But we appreciate um, your giving us the like-for-like uh, -like pattern uh, maintenance as what you are planning to do as of tonight. Doug, if you don't yes. mind, it's Kim. Um, if you don't mind me interrupting for one second, I have sure. um, an application dated September 2007 uh, for the addition. Uh, the stipulation, one of the stipulations on that approval was that uh, number two says the windows shall be Marvin integrity with muttons on the exterior to match the existing light pattern. And I, is, I, I'm sorry, Doug, go ahead. No, that's fine. You can go. Uh, Jen. 
I think the elevate is what they're calling that integrity now. Yes, I was going to say the same thing. It's essentially the same product, whatever improvements they've made, that is the same line as the integrity. It's the successor, yeah, and it is. that's that is correct. Yeah, Matt Matt Gove recommended that exact product and said and concurs what you just said. Yeah. It should be this. It'll be the same. Excellent. And are you using Gove again for installation? Yes, we are. Okay, great. Very good. Are there any questions of any other commissioners? And while I'm at it, I uh, passed over our roll call for today, our attendance. So let me just make note of that for the record. Uh, we have uh, today, I believe, um, regular members, including Ovian, uh, Wolf, uh, we have Raymond, I believe that we have Lyons, and uh, we have Mead. Is that correct, all five? Yes. In addition, uh, I believe we have uh, one alternate with us, uh, that would be Miglis. Uh, Mr. Miglis, since we have five voting members already, your participation uh, is certainly welcome, although you would not be voting this evening. Uh, so um, I think our other two uh, uh, alternates uh, were not able to join us tonight, and that would be Craco and Zambrello. Is that correct, everyone? Yes. I believe so. Great. Sorry to interrupt, but at least that record is now made. So uh, keeping in mind that we have five uh, regular voters here tonight, plus an alternate, uh, if any of the six of you have uh, any additional questions for this applicant, now would be the time. Hearing none, uh, thank you for joining us tonight, uh, applicants. Uh, we appreciate uh, your working with our uh, coordinator on this project. And if there are additional issues that arise, please uh, make sure you uh, follow up with her. Uh, thank you. Great, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application for 26 Willard Street. Hearing none, we'll move to the application at 8 Rainer Lane. This is uh, the siting project there and that, um, is there a participant uh, tonight from that uh, application here? Yes. Thank you. This is Kirk uh, Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Are you the contractor? Yes. If you could just identify your business address, please, that would be appreciated. 41 Rosewood Drive, Vernon, Connecticut. And just for the record, is the applicant also tuned into this Zoom? If not, that's fine. I was just inquiring. I believe she is. She's here. Okay. And perhaps her mic is not on. Uh, if for some reason the applicant wants to say something, we'll certainly make time for that. But uh, for now, sir, uh, you're welcome to let us know anything you want to uh, regarding this project in addition to the documents you've already provided. Um. Pretty straightforward, just uh, what the application says, cedar impressions, uh, seven inch to the weather, vinyl siding. Is there a plan to remove the wood siding as yes, part of this project? Removed. Yes, that will be removed. And so once it's gone, it'll be completely gone. Uh, is the wood siding that's there right now um, in a condition that uh, requires its removal, or is this a uh, discretionary change? Um, in other words, it, if the house were, in other words, if the house were going to be painted, would the wood have to be replaced? Yes, some of the, not all of it, but a, a lot of it would have to be replaced. And roughly, how much would you say a lot is based on a percentage estimate? Um, 50% maybe. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Are there any questions of any commissioners for the applicant? Will the corners be mitered corners or were you looking for a corner board? Um, I believe we're doing the mitered corners. Okay. 
Any other questions of any other commissioners? Out of curiosity, is this a product that you've worked with quite a bit or? Yes, I've used this product before. Okay. okay. Uh, I see a message coming through, I think from uh, the homeowner. Uh, if there's something she wants to communicate to us, um, we'll take a look for that uh, so that it can be raised here. Uh, perhaps, Kim, you can check on that message if she's sending something while I just indicate that um, Jen's question is important to us because although Cedar Impressions uh, or this particular version of uh, Cedar Replication has been used in the district in a number of different places, uh, the most successful installations uh, have been where the uh, installer is really familiar with it to maximize the replicating nature of at least some of it. The other thing I wanted to ask was about the um, other areas of the house. Uh, this is a, a house that had uh, a porch replacement made um, in the past few years. Were you involved with that, Mr. Um, contractor? Yes, I was. Okay, that's great. So you already are somewhat familiar with the uh, lay of the land having worked on that project. Yes. So can you give us an idea of uh, th that particular uh, project? The part that was, if I recall correctly, it was a mixture of aluminum screens and was uh, was there use of a ASIC type material as part of that project or not? Uh, yes, we did the trim boards around the windows in that. But this proposal is to is to wrap in aluminum the trim rather than to replace with ASIC. Yes. Will you be able to do that in uh, a manner that uh, kind of replicates the look of the of the flat white uh, ASIC that I think was used uh, around the porch? In other words, is the aluminum going to be shiny? Um, no, it's it's not shiny. No. Okay. Uh, the, the at cost, this point. The, the cost to do ASEC on all the trim on the entire house would be would be exorbitant. The um, is that is are those trim boards in need of replacement? Uh, some of them are yes. Are there any questions of any other commissioners for the applicant? Doug, it's Kim. Um, the applicant is having a hard time with her audio. Um, so that's what the message came through saying. Um, it did not stipulate, it, they didn't state what color they were doing, but I think from what it looks like in the application, it looks like white was highlighted. You might wanna talk about the colors. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Contractor, can you let us know uh, if you're planning a, I, well, and I see a note has come through here. Yes. You're planning a relatively dark color for the uh, shingle impressions and uh, white perhaps for the aluminum trim? Uh, the aluminum trim will stay white to, ma to match what's already there. Okay, and we're getting a yes from the homeowner uh, regarding the uh, color combination uh, that we just discussed on the record. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, getting over that uh, little technological leap. Uh, and there weren't any other questions, I believe, of any other commissioners. Just so, one, is it, I have one question. Is it sorry. possible to replace, because you're taking off the siding, you're not going to be in a position where um, it's standing very proud from the house and the trim um, once you put the new siding on. Is it possible to replace the new trim, to replace the trim that is damaged in the ASIC and leave the ones that are wood that are in good shape? 
I suppose it's possible, but y you would want it all to look the same. So um, I would suggest wrapping everything. The uh, the combination of wrapping versus ASIC um, is hard for me to recall at this moment in terms of other properties where we've done this kind of approval. So we may need to do a bit of research on the matter. Um, but I, uh, I agree with you that whatever it is, it should probably be the same thing throughout. I guess that's part of the reason I brought up the ASIC to begin with though, since it's already in part of the house. Although you could separate the porch in your mind and, and visually um, it did come to mind that it's already there. So continuing it on the other trim areas um, seemed to make some sense. Do you know which windows um, specifically need to be replaced? The trim needs is damaged and needs to be replaced? Um, offhand, no. But on the porch, going back to the porch, if I wish I could show you a picture because the only um, Azek on that is around the new windows. Um, and it's more of a, uh, how do I explain, like a, almost like a screen porch type of thing. So, so it's not especially substantial is what you're trying to indicate? Right. It, it's almost like it looks part of the windows themselves. I know that uh, we have some experience with ASIC as the trim board uh, with artificial siding. Um, and so it's not an uncommon stipulation here um, uh, to do that. Um, but as I said, uh, that's something we can discuss more in the public meeting and you've already indicated a, a, a financial preference and we'll certainly keep that in mind as we uh, discuss this later. Is there any other? Sorry. Go ahead, sir. I was going to say, would another option be, not that this is that she wants to do, but if you don't approve the aluminum wrap, is to just leave the wood trim and, and paint it if it needs to be painted. Uh, we could certainly consider that as well, sir. I appreciate uh, you bringing that up as an option. Um, let's, I, I guess that the last question I would ask based on that is, the, um, whether it's ASIC or the painted trim, um, how well does wrapped aluminum replicate that look, whether it's the rake boards, the trim boards, or the um, window and door trim? Um, if it's done right, <laughs> um, it, 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 you shouldn't be able to tell the difference from you know the road. Obviously, if you get right up to it, you're going to see. Sure. Some, you know, Okay. Now we'll, be able, we'll be able to tell the difference. I actually <laughs> have cedar impressions on my house and my windows are trimmed in aluminum because the prior siding was aluminum. Um, I'm outside of the district, I should add, but um, I don't particularly care for it on my own house. I know that we've had some really fantastic projects with um, this material, with these shapes that have come out really and really just great. Um, and I, the one that we use as the example all the time is Hartford Avenue and Avalon, that corner. But I think that she retained the original wood. I don't think it was replaced at all. Um, and that came out very nice. So I think that that might be something that we're interested in, ex in exploring a little bit further. Thank you, Jen. And uh, thanks to the contractor as well for engaging in a really good discussion with us and for the homeowner uh, communicating with us uh, by so chat she, as well. She has one more thing to note that she wants you to know that um, the shingles are so rotted that there are holes in her siding. So uh, That uh, is appreciated to know uh, and it uh, is something we'll keep in mind as we get into the hearing as well. Thank you. Is um, I've already made a call to the uh, commissioners. Interrupt me if you want to ask anything further. Otherwise, I'll thank the contractor and the homeowner and ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, 
I will move at this point to application number 5026-20, Edward Del Mastro. That's the garage project at 167 Church Street. Kim, do you have something to tell us about that? Do I have something to tell you? Yeah. I have, I have a, um, a public comment that was sent in by, um, by voicemail, but I don't have anything ahead of time. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I may have misunderstood uh, a withdrawal uh, on another part of a on, on a part of another uh, application. Oh uh, no! One. But Mr. Del Mastro is on, so he should be able to. That's great. Talk. Thank you, Mr. Del Mastro. You're the homeowner. Yes. And um, is that also your mailing address? Correct. Great. So uh, we, we do recall this is uh, in the area where uh, a joint garage was taken down. Um, and uh, I believe the neighbor has already uh, constructed a replacement and now you're planning to do the same? Yes, exactly. So yeah, I'm at 167 Church Street. He's at 171, 173. So- That's great. Uh, I'm looking to- um, construct a 24 by 24 uh, two car garage uh, in the rear of the house, approximately 66 feet from the back of the lot. And I think four, four or five feet, whatever is recommended um, from the property line on the uh, east side of the property. All right. And uh, in addition, uh, well, at this point, let me just ask if there are any questions of any commissioners for Mr. Del Mastro. If there are not, uh, Mr. Del Mastro, thank you for providing the documentation of your um, project. Um, Kim, is there anything else uh, before I let Mr. Del Mastro go that you think that we may be overlooking here? Yeah, actually, I've got a couple questions, Doug. Great. Go ahead. Uh, look, looking at the drawings, there's uh, sort of a front elevation and side elevations of the building. However, the uh, little details like the picture of the roof and stuff are illegible in the PDFs. I don't know if they were legible in what was submitted to uh, Ms. Wolf, but it just you can't read it. So at best, we can take a guess at what the roof pitch is. If you would like me to um, look at the larger plan, the best I can do when it scans uh, through, that's it's a, six, uh, it's a six pitch. Thank you. Six pitch? Yep. Okay. Certainly, if there's any other detail, um, Vatsik, you'd like him to call out. If you want to question him, he may have an answer for you right here. Yeah. That, I mean, that was the one thing that. Uh, there were... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, um, I don't know that the siding, how it's going to be sided is spelled out. Okay, it's going to be siding with um, LP uh, smart side. It's a strand panel siding like T11. Are you familiar with that? So it's going to replicate the look of vertical siding? Correct. It's a composite. <clears throat> yep. And then I'm going to have uh, on the west side of the garage uh, a window. It's a Harvey Magistry window and uh, a, a thermal through smooth door. So uh, it's a, I, I believe those are a steel door. And um, I mean, that's. Before we get to the door and the window, I just want to finish one thing on the siding. Is the siding going to be installed in a uh, uh, state that is pre-painted or will you be painting on site as if it were wood to begin with? It will be pre-painted, but they may change the color to match the house. I see. So maybe primer only. That's Don Solerlin. He's the contractor. He's at my house right now. In That's case, great, yeah. Mr. So I'm sorry. No, just in case you had any specific technical questions that I couldn't answer. 
Sure. If Mr. Soberlin could just uh, spell his last name, if we don't already have it, and then give us uh, his business address, we would appreciate that for the record. Okay. It's spelled S W O V as in Victor E R L A N D. It's pronounced Soberlin. The company is Advanced Carpentry, and I'm at 29 Belmont Street. In that's great, sir. Thank you, Mr. Swarberland. Thank you. Um, so the the it's the so the siding is paintable. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, as far as the door and the window go, um, the are you uh, are those coming in a color or are they going to be painted? They will probably be painted. They're going to come in basic white, and we'll paint them. Including the window sash? <clears throat> yes. If I can't get the color the same as the painting to match the house, then we'll paint it ourselves. I see. And the Harvey Majesty that you're mentioning, uh, I assume that has a synthetic exterior, uh, as does the door, but they'll both be paintable? Yeah, they'll be, they'll be aluminum clad exterior. Thank you, Mr. Swoboland. Okay. Are there any questions of any commissioners for the applicant or the contractor? Yes, Doug, I, I do, uh, Don, and it, it looks like, even though I don't even think it's going to be visible, this red elevation, but it looks like in the drawing that there are two windows next to the door, or is that just a window flipped that's, over, or is this just a drawing? That's just the way they drew it. Okay, it's so just, one, one single double hung window. Yeah. yeah, they drew it as a casement, so yeah. it's... That's why they have it longer. And what are the garage doors going to be? Um, I was going to get it through like overhead doors, but steel or fiberglass, whatever is recommended. I well, actually, I'd like to get the one, the same ones that um, Bob Fabrizi next door got. I thought that Lee put up a couple of really nice doors there. I was going to try to mimic those. Thank you for letting us know your preference. Any other questions of any other commissioners for the applicants? Uh, Mr. Applicant and Mr. Contractor, thank you for joining us tonight. You're welcome to stay for the public meeting, um, but you need not do so. And we will uh, recall the things that you called out to us here when we uh, address your uh, application in the public meeting. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Sure, is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? Doug? Yes? Uh, it's Kim. I had a voicemail from Dave Santoro um, in support of this application. He That's great. On, he lives on Church Street. Yes, uh, I directed Mr. Santoro to you, Kim. Uh, uh, after he uh, indicated that he wished to have a chance to speak in favor. And I thought that would be uh, the best way for him to proceed would be to contact you uh, in whatever manner worked for you. So uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, at this point, we'll move forward to application number 5027-20, Paul Asella, the swimming pool project at 32 Hartford Avenue. Paul, are you with us? Yeah, hi, Doug. I am here. This is Paul Asella, 32 Hartford Avenue. That's great. And this is primarily a fencing project for us since the pool is in the ground? Uh, it, is, it is not. It, the application is for both installation of pool and for uh, the fence surrounding it. Okay. I didn't see any details in the application about the pool itself. Um, I had submitted uh, the plans to the town and it were, there was a, a PDF included in the material that was submitted for the HTC application. But I can describe it for you if you'd like. Sure. And Janet, it should be in the documentation. I don't see it. It's in the plot plan, but if Jen is asking for the actual manufacturer or how high size, that's not there. It's definitely on the plot plan. Yeah. The what I see is the application page, the details about the fencing, a number of pages with the fencing and the gate, 
um, and then a copy of the plot plan. I don't see anything about the pool itself. It's an in-ground. I thought it was an above ground. No, no it's, it's, in it's in the ground. Oh, oh, great. Okay. That's, great. that's part of the reason uh, gotcha. I said what I said earlier. So no I'm worries. glad. No um, worries then. Thank you. You bet. So um, thank you very much. Uh, it looked like there was quite a bit of documentation there for the fence. Uh, you have a relatively deep lot and uh, the uh, pool is going to be situated, as I recall it correctly, between the house and an outbuilding? Yeah, correct. Uh, it, the pool is 20 by 40 and it will be placed just about evenly between uh, the back of the house and the, the barn uh, that's towards the back of the property. And it's situated in such a way that the long, long way goes front to back. Uh, the width is only the 20 feet uh, on the lot, I think, if Correct. I recall. Yep, and centered on the barn. Great. Are there any questions of any other commissioners for this applicant? No. Hearing none, sir, is there anything else you needed to let us know before I let you go? Uh, I, do you need the details of the posting and the fence itself or that was all available in the application and you guys are, you have no additional questions? The documentation was very good for this as far as the fence goes. Uh, I uh, didn't find that I had any questions and perhaps the other commissioners didn't either as a result of that. Okay. So no additional at this comments, point, then. thank you. Uh, you're welcome to stay for the public meeting. Um, just in case we uh, run into any further questions, but I think we have all the documentation we needed. Uh, I'll ask at this point, first of all, I want to thank you for participating in the Zoom meeting tonight and uh, wish you well with the project. Uh, is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, thank you for joining us tonight and we'll move to application number 5028-20. This is the project at 18 Willard Street for uh, siding, windows, uh, various other issues as well. And I think maybe this is the one where the garage was deleted. Am I right about that, Kim? That's correct. Okay. That's right, yes. Th thank you, Jen. Okay, uh, first of all, do we have Tom Derrick or a representative here? Yes, I'm Tom Derrick from 18 Willard. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, are there, uh, is there anything you wish to tell the uh, commission from the outset in addition to what you provided in writing? Um, I guess if we start with the gutters, um, you know, basically there's no gutters on the house now. So when it rains, we do get some water seepage in the basement. And I do believe that the gutters would take care of that problem. Um, get the water away from the foundation. Um, they, I did see in here that it, it says I'm replacing the railing, the railings on the front steps. That's actually for the back deck. The deck railings on the back are some kind of composite right now and they're all warping. So I'd like to replace them with uh, regular pressure treated lumber. And I sent a picture as what I'd like it to kind of match kind of the railing that I normally do for that. Um, the windows, uh, windows on this house, um, I guess were replaced by the previous owners and they're non-compliant. Um, so I'd like to, you know, get those up to code for you guys and replace the ones that he did not replace yet um, with the Harvey Majesty windows. Um, grids all matching what's there. I think it's a prairie grill on top and there's no grids on the bottom sash. Um, and can you confirm the color you're looking for, sir? For the windows? Yes. Um, I was, I'm, I'm fine with, with the basic white. Um, I would like to maybe do the black exterior if it's okay. Um, and it's it's uh, vinyl if you're flat outside, so it's. If you're interested in uh, more than one color, it's good for us to know so that we can proceed. And if you have a preference between colors, you can always let us know your first choice. 
Okay. First choice, I guess, on the outside of the windows themselves would be the black. Um, I think it would off, you know, there's no shutters on the house. So I think it would offset that nicely and make them pop a little nicer. Um, but I am totally fine with the white. Let the trim is white, so it match the trim. That's fine too. Um, <coughs> I don't know what else you want to move on to the shed. Um, the only thing I don't think I put in there would, would be a ramp to the shed, which I would just do out of pressure treated. Um, there's just no garage or shed there. So I'm just looking for some kind of storage for lawnmower, snowblower and so forth. Um, and then the last thing is the front door, the existing front door is uh, on the bottom. Two panels are swelling up very, very badly and are starting to crack and you could see light through them. So I sent you the information on the front doors that we could, that we found um, pre-finished in a mahogany uh, wood grain finish. Um, kind of matching the exact style, craftsman style. Um, you know, I, I circled it in the uh, existing, I mean, in the, the pictures that I sent. Thank you, Kim. Mr. Derek, um, you indicated that you're not planning on replacing the front steps. Have those already been done? We we did replace the front step damaged steps, yes, with uh, exactly what's there. Okay, so that's so a like I, so I was change. told, I believe, I, I could be wrong, but I, I believe I was told by you, board, board for board, no changing in, Anything I could do that for repair wise. Correct. Thank you for representing uh, the work that you've done thus far so that uh, that can be explained. I'm wondering uh, about on the front of the house, um, there's a decorative window in the front peak and it looks like um, maybe the homeowner replaced it with some sort of stained glass looking window. It does have some stained glass in that window, yes. You don't happen to have the original window hiding up in the attic somewhere, do you? I don't even know if there was a window there. There's not on the other houses around it. The, on the sides of the house, there are square windows, which appear to look original. Um, but that one on top, no, there's nothing left in the house. Okay. That was worth are you, I, I, I'm just curious, especially if we're trying to judge the window color, are you, uh, what color are you planning to uh, either maintain or change to on the house, well, on the siding? Color is very hard to explain. It's, it's, it's kind of a tan, but it's, it's got a green tint to it. So that it's gonna be like a tannish, so with the white, bright white trim, and then I thought the black accents, black windows, and then we were thinking the black front door, and maybe staining those front steps black just to kind of give it a little bit of a pop, again, with no shutters on it, just to give it that extra, or shutters kind of give it that dimension. I like the dimension look. So you're planning to change the color of the body of the house? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of any other commissioners for this applicant? Yes, the back porch, is it going to be exactly the same size and footprint as what's there already? Yes, all the framing on that deck looks perfect. Um, uh, I did say that I just want to replace the railing, but I am. It, the more I look at it, the decking itself is going to have to be replaced too. But it's going to be the exact same sets, exact same frame. I don't think that it's visible. Um, I did drive by earlier today. I don't think that it's visible from the public way. Does anyone else have an opinion on that? Because normally we would not approve um those that railing set up if it were vi visible with the railings the um bars are fixed to the outside as opposed to this you know the setup on the front steps um but if it's not visible then we're not concerned about it i don't think that i could see it from the road does anyone else have an idea on that i agree john Fer i look from yeah i don't yeah. believe yeah you can see it the reason I, sure I'd like, like it on the outside is because of the way it will be going down the stairs. 
um, if I do it on the outside of the deck, when I come down the stairs with it, it'll line up perfectly straight with the stairs. If I go to the inside of the framing, I'll have to kind of do a double post at the top of the stairs and it might look a little funny. I see. Well, I think it's neither here nor there as long as it's not larger and it cannot be seen from the public way. Thank you, Jen. And I think just to the point of where they open balusters, and you're just talking about really putting a fascia board on the outside piece, the kind of a closed piece. I don't think it would affect the stairs, uh, Tom, uh, what you're talking about the double post, but yeah, you can't see it right. in my opinion. I mean, it is true that we've had an installation at the corner of Rosedale and Church Street where what I think, um, Mr. Lyons is trying to describe a fascia application on the outside. Um, I'm, in your case, it would be floating. Um, so I, I'm not sure how successful it would be. Uh, but if that's what Mr. Lyons is referring to, we have an example of that kind of uh, setup to uh, some extent at the corner of Belmont, and I'm sorry, at the corner of Rosedale and Church on a front uh, railing system. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. Are there a question, any other questions or uh, comments about this project while we still have the applicant with us? Hearing none? Doug, can oh. I just interrupt you one second? I'm going to share my screen or attempt sure. to share my screen here. I just want to show you that there is no public view from behind. It does back up to other properties before it gets to Francis Street. Sure. Okay, if you could see my where my yeah cursor is. Cursor is. So here's the building. Here's Francis Street, but in the meantime, these block these houses block Hartford Ave, and the school building would block Francis Street. So there really is no view behind from any public way. Sure. I. Uh, my only other question would be about the gutters. Uh, I, I can't tell from. Uh, my own recollection, but are there rafter tails on this house? There are none, so they would have to be from the roof, like the strap okay. from the roof type, type to hold it. Okay, so yeah, they are, I could put the rafter tails on, but obviously keeping with the house, you'd be better off going from the roof. Thank you, uh, Kim, for giving us the picture again. Uh, where are you thinking of installing the gutters Al along that front porch? Well, on the back of the house is where mostly the rain's coming. I, I don't, I guess the front doesn't necessarily need it because the porch does bring the rain away. But the back of the house has um, two spots. Uh, the, the pitch comes off sure. differently in the back of the house. And then there's only two little spots, five on two, I'd say maybe maybe six foot gutters on either side. Um, yeah, because just looking at the front of the house now, just in this picture too, it, I don't need it in the front. Okay, that's one less complication yeah. in some ways. Um, yeah. So I appreciate your uh, thinking about that with us um, and, and interacting with me on that question. Any other questions for the applicant from any other commissioner? The, uh, other thing I'd like to confirm, I'm sorry, is, is putting the AC in the back corner of the house. I don't think, I don't know if I need a permission for that or not from you guys. That's yeah, a, an administrative, administrative approval. Uh, um, if you decide to do something that's outside of the administrative approval, then the matter can always come back to us. Okay. Um, I believe I'm stating by, that correctly. You'll need to run that by Kim. I signed yes. up on it yeah. in the building department. Okay. That's what um, I meant by administrative approval, uh, sir. Uh, is that if you uh, touch base again with uh, our coordinator uh, about this, then uh, you'll probably find that you don't have to come back to us for anything special there, okay. unless you're deciding to do something a bit different than what we um, have given her discretion to approve. No. I just had one final question. What color is the shed gonna be? Uh, be painted, painted to match the house. Um, I sent a picture of the shed. It, I believe it comes with the texture 
the 11 siding on it, kind of vertical pipe siding, wood. Okay. Thank right. you. Great, thanks very much. Thank you for joining us this evening, sir. I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, we welcome you to stay for the public meeting if you'd like to do so, sir, or you can follow up with Kim in the morning. And at this point, we'll move to application number 5029-20, Sandy Stavola, the project on uh, 157 Broad Street. Welcome back, Sandy. Good evening. Thank you. So this is a project to um, replace the wood siding on the garage wing of the house with a uh, vinyl siding to match the vinyl siding that's in clapboard form on the main part of the house. Am I stating it correctly? Yes, I have um, Douglas Sellers here as well. He's a contractor doing the work, so I'm gonna defer to him to speak. But I oh, will that's say- great. I, I, I provided you with quite a few pictures of the house and, and what the existing condition is to show the reason for the repair and also samples of what I was planning on using. Yes, they were uh, seen by the uh, majority of the commission. We appreciate your leaving those for us. And Doug, if you could just indicate your business address for the record, that would be great. Sure. Uh, Doug LaSella, DBL Contracting, 37 Belmont Street, Weatherstone. Thank you. Are there any questions of any commissioners for this applicant um, or the I, contractor? Uh, excuse me, Doug. Um, sure. So, so it, maybe it was, uh, I'm reading the, um, the application, but it was kind of misspoken the way you said it. So the, sure. garage, the garage is going to, um, what Sandra and I are proposing is to put a vinyl board and back and style siding on the garage. Not, not a clapboard. Correct. I oh. didn't want to indicate that it's, it's a vertical siding that's going right. on the garage wing. Uh, but it's when I said matching, uh, I meant matching in color, evidently the oh. gray clapboard style siding on the main part of the house. Maybe that's a better way to phrase it. Oh, okay. Just want to make sure everybody understood. We're not doing clap horizontal clapboard on the garage, We're trying to replicate the vertical board and back look with vinyl on, on the garage and breeze. Um, Sandra and I really haven't spoken about color. The house has a grayish double four vinyl on it now. Uh, the garage has white. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure if we're planning on going with uh, white on that or trying to match the gray on, on the uh, horizontal side of the house. Like I'm looking at the garage and it's really more of a gray. I think she's talking to her contractor. So, okay. so Sandra, you're saying that the, the, the garage looks a little gray versus? Yes. Okay, okay. There's so, white trim, that, there's white trim, but the garage itself is gray. Okay, so usually with, with the commission, it, it helps if um, we can kind of give them some sense of what you want to do with the color and helps them determine if the uh, product is, is going to be suitable for the project. So if you're saying, you know, match that kind of light gray on the house with everything, that's what, that's how Correct. I would. Correct. I would suggest, um, you know, I, the sample that we had ended up being a sample from two different um, applications, I think, that we had here. We have to have a gray uh, clapboard. Originally, I thought that was the same clapboard that's on the main part of the house. Um, and so I kind of looked at them side by side and thought they coordinated pretty well. I would just ask that um, the um, that this color of the uh, vertical clapboard that you're planning to use uh, coordinate uh, pretty close to what's already on the house. I mean, I think to a certain extent, there's a certain amount of license or ability that you'll have to get away with something that's not an exact match because they're two different structures uh, and they're going in two different directions. But I think if they're obviously different, then you begin to uh, create uh, a few issues there. No, that, uh, that's my intent. 
I had a feeling, Sandy. I'm an engineer. I wouldn't want anything different than for it to be a match. <laughs> and uh, in that same token, uh, I have to admit, while looking at the uh, property, I kind of, and I don't know if it was the lighting, but it kind of looked like the, the shutters on the front of the house have either faded or are different in some way from the shutters on the north side of the house that face the driveway. Now, of course, there's three windows with shutters on the front. Only one window with shutters uh, uh, facing the driveway, but I didn't know if they were all, uh, all four windows, those shutters originally matched, or if they were different to begin with. Have you noticed that at all, Sandy? It's, it's part of the application to replace those as well. Okay, is it for all four windows? It would be for all four, yes. Great, so they're going to match, and that was the addition of shutters that was uh, mentioned there. Yeah, right. and, and then that's because they are faded, as you saw. They're very old and worn looking, so it would be re replaced in kind, but new. Great. I, uh, that's all the questions that I had. Are there any questions of other commissioners for the applicants or the, con the applicant or the contractor? And, and then, Doug, I'll just add that you, you had two samples because we are looking to repair some of the existing siding on the house as well. Oh, so it is your siding sample that was the clapboard also yeah i believe we submitted two because uh yes if you the back side of the if you could put up the picture of the house again it's kind of hard to explain um so the back side that's opposite the garage yes uh, when i took out the um wood patio the siding was built to match the patio and now the, oh, I see. the new patio is at grade so there's areas there that need to be replaced there's an old clothesline that's attached to the vinyl that we want to take down. Um, Doug had said he wouldn't be able to, you know, do an exact color match, so we want to reside that whole piece. And then on the other side of the house, uh, taking out a um, air conditioner that's built into the wall, and there was an abandoned, I think it was like a hose line where there's damage in the siding, so we're going to use the siding from the section that we take down to replace it on the street side. So okay, that I think it's, it's fair to say that these areas mm -hmm. that you just described, Sandy, are either not visible from the public way or have a very minimal view versus that's yeah. anything that's on that front facade with the three windows that have uh, shutters or anything on the side facing the driveway with the fourth window with shutters. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. I just wanted to make you aware of you know, the full scope of what we're doing. Please, do, uh, thank you for doing so. Uh, we won't expect it to be an, an exact match, but it sounds like you've tried to pick a gray clapboard that's relatively close to what you had. And that also seemed to coordinate with the vertical uh, vinyl siding that you are asking us to use. Correct. Uh, the only other question I had, uh, well, I think of it is the, the window. Uh, I assume that's, is that a white window to match the others, Doug? Yes. And that's aluminum uh, clad? Yeah, it's the uh, Majesty wood window aluminum clad with simulated divided light, six over one. Are the other windows in the house still original wood or are they something else? I, I uh, Sandy could um, sure. answer that better. However, there is a kind of mix match. Yeah. Uh, I think in the, on the front top gable, and in the attic, there is an original window. The garage window we're looking to uh, replace is original. I think everything else has been kind of uh, hodgepodge, if you will, and there's a few different things going on there. Since the garage, yeah. I'm sorry, since the garage isn't uh, heated, uh, is that garage window reparable in the, st in, in the sense that you could paint it white and um, at least the original windows in the house would be known because we know what that window is without there being the downside that there usually is from a, uh, an, uh, a single glazed window. I don't know enough about the condition of that window to ask. So, so it's, a, it's probably the original window to the house. It's you know, wood, the glazing is all gone, single pane. I, I get, I get um, you know, we don't need to be Concerned with the thermal factor, I get that. Um, I just think that the rest of the windows in the house are 
ultimately um, going to need some addressing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, my recommendation to Sandra was to go with something that, you know, as you move forward over time, you're going to be able to easily replicate. I appreciate that because if this is uh, something that is something that might be replicated in other areas of the house, uh, Sandy, you know, um, this, uh, and because the window is white, uh, this particular Marvin window has been used in the district before, uh, but because it is white, it isn't particularly forgiving in some areas. In this particular area, it's not the most prominent, certainly. Uh, but for instance, we were just given earlier in this meeting a recommend uh, or a, a request for uh, Marvin Elevate. And um, I would generally say that in white, that window does a pretty good job of replicating the look of a, a wood painted window, perhaps better than the Marvin, uh, I mean, than the Harvey Magist Majesty. Um, so if it's something that uh, is almost a little bit bigger than the project itself. Uh, at least for my purposes, I might suggest today that we uh, reserve judgment on the window while uh, acting on the rest of this project. Um, and um, at least that's some place where I may be on this. I would ask at this point if there are other commissioners that have other questions at this time for the applicant or the contractor, since we're lucky enough to have them both. Yeah, I, I, uh, Doug, uh, what's the length of that vertical siding? Because unfortunately, you know, obviously the examples we were given were very abbreviated, and it looks like even maybe some repairs were made like a, a foot from the ground up on the garage side or to the Anderson Farm uh, side was maybe repaired there. There's various lengths of the, because the pitch of the roof's there. Are these gonna be single seamed? Uh, so, so yeah, you're correct. It, it, the bottom foot has probably been replaced. My guess would be at least twice yeah. because of the splash and the rotting and all that. Um, the panels are 10 feet long. So at the very highest point, probably, I guess about six feet of the gable because it's sort of a salt box type of roof going back. Um, my, my intention was to use full panels all the way, even on the shorter ones. And it, you've got some waste there, but you're going to have a full panel. But at 10 feet, you're going to have a, um, a joint. It's going to be a, like a Z flashing joint, matching color. Um, sort of like you do with Texture 111, you know, with an eight foot Texture 111 panel, you have to put a kind of Z flashing on that and make those. Up. So I, without knowing exactly, I'm thinking we're talking about maybe six feet of the, the actual peak where it's over 10 feet uh, where we will have that seat. And the is window's right below the, window? the highest peak yeah. is too. Um, True, so there will be a break in there, so that will help a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then how about that louvered? Uh, that's gonna be a vinyl uh, application too, or you're gonna? Um, you know what? I, I didn't even take into account to the louver. Um, I mean, the louver, for, for all intents and purposes, doesn't need to exist because right. it's a garage. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I didn't take that into account. So, if we did replace the louver, it would be the same size in a vinyl um, yeah. product. In same uh, color, it would be monochromatic. Yeah, yeah, we, can get, yeah. The, we can get the same color match as, as the combatant. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Are there other questions of other commissioners for the applicant or the contractor? Hearing none, um, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I will ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, we'll move to application number 5030-20. Uh, this is the project at 21 Howard Avenue. Is Mary Lou Kramer with us or a representative? Yes, Mary Lou Kramer is here. And my That's contract great. also. 
if the contractor could give uh, her or his name as well as uh, their business address, that would be great. Thank you. My name is Corey Levitt uh, with McGee Companies, 7 Cody Street, West Hartford, Connecticut. Thank you for joining us tonight, sir. Is there anything that you or the applicant would like to let us know about the project before uh, I ask if there are any questions from the commissioners? It's pretty much just smooth sailing, uh, replacing the existing uh, vinyl siding with new vinyl and uh, wrapping all the windows on the entire house and the garage with new white aluminum coil stock, which is present now. That's great. That's great. Um, are there, uh, there was a lot of documentation with this application. Uh, are there any questions of any commissioners beyond what uh, has been shared with us, especially since we're lucky enough to have two people? So I assume it's going to be the whole house, including the addition. So now the entire house will be one color. Yes. And uh, any other questions by any other commissioners? And part of this application has to do with the cupola? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, and all the uh, commissioners are aware of the request for that approval tonight as well. Very good. Uh, if there are any questions of any other commissioners, if there aren't, uh, if there are, please speak up. If there aren't, then I will thank uh, both parties for being with us. We're just about to start the public meeting, so you may want to uh, stay tuned. Uh, but if you don't do so, please follow up with Kim in the morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Is there anyone from the public that thank wishes you. to speak for or against this application? Hearing none. I will move to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, the last application uh, for tonight, 50 I'm sorry, 5031-20. This is the project at 323 Main Street. Uh, it's a uh, amendment request regarding the windows. And uh, do we have the Sudels here or is Kim handling this? I, I, Doug Sudell is here for this. Oh, that's great. Welcome, sir. Thank you. You bet. So Doug, is there anything you wanted to let us know in addition to what uh, you've already provided us in writing? I, I, I think it's pretty clear cut. We, we just, uh, we, we did the original application shortly after we purchased the home. We've had a little more time there and, uh, and we, we chose to go or choosing to go in a different direction with the manufacturer of the window that we want to use in the addition. Um, that said, the look of, of the window, the, uh, it, the divided light, all, all else will be the same. And is anticipated that if some of the other replacement, uh, some or all of the other replacement windows are replaced, that you would want to go with this particular product in those locations as well? I think so, but at, at this point, we don't have any plan to do that. Uh, I see. In the, near, in the near future. So am I correct in thinking that you're not asking for anything other than a modification to the earlier approval? Uh, and I will need to be reminded, uh, Kim, in the earlier approval, did we end up giving approval for the whole house? Um, the original, the house already had replacements with Harvey, but they're failing and um, he doesn't want to go through any possibility of having these fail. So he's going with a different product. Understand, but I didn't know if at any point we ended up. No, um, Okay. didn't ever express in any interest in doing the rest of the house. That's okay. correct. Just, just the addition is all we, all we spoke about. Okay, that's fine then. Thank you very much for uh, making that record clear for me. Is there any, are there any questions of any commissioners for Doug? Hearing none. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're about to start the public meeting if you want to stay tuned. Uh, if not, uh, you can check with Kim in the morning. Thank you. So is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? 
Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting on all of the aforementioned items. So Make a motion. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, called out, I believe the motion was by uh, Jen and yes. uh, Chris uh, was the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the public hearing is closed and the public meeting is open. Beginning with 5024, the Spencer Marr project at 26 Willard Street, uh, Marvin Elevate Windows. Is there a motion? I'll move to approve as submitted. I'll second. second it. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, we'll give the motion to uh, Jen and the second to Claire, if uh, that's all right with everyone. Uh, any discussion? I think the Marvin Integrity and now its successor Elevate has proven to be a, a, a good product and certainly superior to some of the others that we're seeing more routinely from Anderson and Harvey. Um, hopefully, we'll get some continuity at, on the project and the, all of the windows were, will be replaced eventually, um, but I think it's a good, you know, I think it's a good project, a uh, good product for the house. Thank you. Um, I would uh, join in that comment, and as I said earlier, uh, if for some reason they uh, have a second thought about any window light. Uh, division changes or pattern changes, uh, they know to come back to us, but the approval today uh, allows them to continue to move forward in deploying this uh, successful window on other areas of the house. I will call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 502620, uh, Edward Del Mastro, this is the garage on Church Street. No. Is there a motion? No, no. Skipped one. No. Sorry. Skipped one. Sorry about that. Uh, I Let me go back to uh, Rainer Lane. Sorry about that. Application number 5025-20, Kurt Johnson, the application at 8 Rainer Lane. Sorry, I have some new glasses on. That's okay. Move to approve with the stipulation that the corners be mitered on the house and that the trim on the windows be left wood. I uh, second it. Thank you, Claire. Um, okay, so here's my concern. I, th I love this house and its old details. We're giving up the clipped um, edges on the wood, on the sides, which is part of the charm of the house. Um, I'm worried that the aluminum is going to stand too proudly as looking very new. Um, I would be open to it if the applicant came back and said the window trim is too damaged to wrap, but I'm not sure. I drove by and I could see the damage on the clapboarding that needed to be replaced on the front side. And I imagine it's worse on the back side where it's not getting sun. Um, but I didn't notice any window trim damage. And so I certainly would, if it turns out, you know, the applicant takes a good look at it and comes back and says, you know, I really have to do something. I would entertain a change um, by amendment for either a composite or the wrapping. But for now, I think, um, it's going to be a nicer project based on what we've seen with this material, the Cedar Impressions. It's going to be a nicer project and a better outcome if we leave the trim as is and just have it painted. I think it gives the best of both worlds uh, since we know that the worst part of the damage here appears to be on the, uh, the uh, shingle siding. Um, and we have seen quite a few examples of Bosworth houses uh, where if you maintain some of the details, whether it's a brick wall or it's uh, some of the wood siding uh, or even the use of uh, wood replacement uh, like an ASIC product um, and, and going to wrapping as maybe a last resort uh, makes some sense, at least uh, the approval that 
Jen is uh, suggesting here allows them to get going with the project and um, get a chance to really see what is adjacent to this uh, sh these shingles and they can decide if they really need to go further. But it, it's the house is very exposed. It's on a corner uh, and it has a lot of charm. And I realize there are many houses in this neighborhood that have been wrapped, but we have wrapped, uh, we have done all of those okays with a great deal of care to try to maintain as much charm as we can in that neighborhood. Thank you, everyone. Is there anyone else that wishes to say something regarding this? Either an additional stip or um, a comment. Hearing none, the, uh, the, the, the I'm Doug, sorry. Doug, Doug. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, they're proposing to strip all the existing siding off to start with. And uh, you threw out the idea of ASAC and he said it's cost prohibitive. There's many other uh, replicas of, good replicas of siding, uh, of a, a trim done in artificial uh, materials. Unfortunately, wrapping is not a replica. It is a wrap. It's, it's like sticking a Band-Aid on the trim. Um, so if it gets wrapped, there's no way it's going anywhere near the, to reproduce what, what's there now. Uh, you're losing so much of the fabric of the house already. I mean, it, it, this one pains me. This one pains me a lot. And it, in part, is that because um, it's such a reachable house to paint or uh, reside uh, with shingles? Well, it, it those of us who've had to deal with ladders. Uh, certainly, it's easy for the contractor, but it's it's a house that's very prominent. It's a house that has been, for the most part, kept very well. The paint job looks lovely on it. Yes, it has damage, but uh, you know, I think it's a prominent house. It's a very nicely detailed house. And from what I heard from the contractor, he, I did not, I did not hear or I did not hear anything that would make me feel confident that it's going to come out as a first class job. Well, I will well, say this, Vatsik. I'm sorry. Uh, there's somebody else who may be I trying just, to speak. Uh, so Ray, I'll let you go. Not, I mean, thank you. The, the work that I've, I've seen uh, the, this contractor do in the district and outside of the district is, is pretty strong. So I'm pretty confident in what, okay. what his work is. I, um, I appreciate that, Mark. Uh, I have the same impression of the uh, contractor because of one of the previous jobs done, but I will say that if you go to Cape Cod, uh, every house uh, on the Cape uh, suffers eventual wear and tear of uh, wood shingles, and they're routinely replaced, and the house is repainted, and the uh, cost is very favorable compared to uh, doing what has to be done to try to create and fool the eye um, as to um, what's been done with the house. I have seen houses uh, use ASIC here in the district um, and replicate the wood trim. Uh, and I think that it uh, doing that and uh, if that's the area that uh, is of greatest concern is, a, is an option. If the wood trim is fine, then you're really talking about uh, weighing the cost of changing uh, even 50% of the shingles uh, and maybe not much else uh, and a paint job. Uh, it would weigh quite favorably, I think, compared to the cost of the very Rep, the very good replica job we'd be looking for here. So I don't know if there's anyone else uh, that uh, wants to expand upon what Vatsik said, uh, but uh, for my sake, uh, I think that the cost of trying to make it look uh, like it replicates the look of the existing uh, is something that's going to actually cost the homeowner more. Um, granted, it may last longer, but it's lasted 
60 years already. Uh, so uh, is there anyone else from the commission that wishes to speak to any of that before I call the vote? Yeah, you know, having done replacement cedar shakes one, you know, one side every two years, uh, myself, I, I am, if that's the point you're, you're getting at, I, I think when we allowed the lumen or the wrap or the reconstruction of that kind of side porch by the garage that this was inevitable that they were going to come to us with a vinyl product with all the other hub or not or Bosworth's houses on Oldham in that area I, I think this still with this and, and looking at the quality of work I, I'm just familiar with what I've seen in the district with this contractor that it, it's, it's going to look okay it's going to blend in nice I, I like the compromise of using the wood keeping the wood trim especially uh, you know around that bay window and so there's not much detail on this house as there are just kind of around that garage as there are some of the other Bosworths uh, mitered corners we're getting uh, so that, that's Thank what I would you, say Chris. again we don't supposedly talk about cost but you're right probably cost effective in the long run it you know you, you replace uh, one side a year uh, I agree with what you're saying I just bring it up because uh, I think that to a certain extent the labor involved with this uh, is not just a cost issue to people, but it weighs on people's minds. Uh, and I think that it's easy for them to forget uh, if you don't live in an area like the Cape where this kind of repair work is done routinely uh, in other shoreline areas of Connecticut, uh, that uh, wouldn't, it wouldn't seem so uh, overwhelming uh, or, uh, uh, so much to weigh against uh, a very good replica job, which is, of course, what we're looking for by way of the compromise that Jen has proposed in her motion. Uh, just to be clear, who was the second for this? It was Claire. me, Doug. It was Claire. Thank um, you, Claire. And this is Claire. I do just want, want to make a point that um, something that, Mr., that Chris said. Um, if we're going to start letting the tail wag the dog, and um, the thin edge of the wedge concept that we let um, a garage or some part of a building go vinyl, and then we use that as the excuse to let the rest of the house go vinyl, we're gonna wanna be very, very, very careful about those smaller projects. I just, just as a general statement, um, sure. I don't, obviously I seconded this. I think this is a good compromise in this situation, but we've gotta be careful of that kind of slippery slope logic. I agree, Claire. I know for my sake, uh, the porch didn't drive the decisions elsewhere. And I think maybe even for it's Chris, it's just a it general comment, either. Doug, for the whole Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure how, thank sure. you. Sure. Not quite sure. Uh, I would defer to Claire saying that it is just a general statement. Sure. Uh, not quite sure that it was a, a in, any indication of uh, the tail wagging the dog, but. Okay. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, Jen. And Again, Bosley. we can't control what people propose to us. We can obviously control what we think is appropriate or not. I think sure. it Agreed. Is, is a pointed statement, not a general statement. Sure. So at this point, unless anyone else wishes to be heard, I will call the vote. All those in favor of, uh, proof, uh, of this motion, which is an approval with stipulations, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved with stipulation. Thank you very much, uh, folks, uh, and, and our alternate uh, on, I think, a very difficult application. So uh, now that I can go back to the one uh, that I had skipped forward to, that would be the garage at 167 Church Street, number 50, 26, 20. Edward Del Mastro, is there a motion? Um, uh, I'll move to okay. approve as submitted. Thank you, Claire. I mean, uh, Jen, is a there second. a second? second? Thank you, Chris. Are there any um, stipulations requested or necessary here? Everything was kind of laid out for us, uh, but I don't know if there were any changes made, uh, like the window. Is, is this window not looking like the window that's drawn? I don't think that it can be seen from the road anyway with the narrow sight line between the buildings and the 
um, placement of the garage next door. I don't think you're going to be able to see it anyway, but he stated tonight that it's a single double hung. So I think that that suffices. Um, I, think know, I, think, I think oh. the whole project for that matter has a fairly narrow sight line. Um, we allowed the teardown of the mutual garage that had been between these two houses and the construction of a very similar garage next door. Um, so I think that although it may have seemed like we didn't have a lot of details in the app actual application material, I think it, it limited to this particular application, what we have is sufficient. I mean, it has been the subject of a lot of discussion already. Uh, I'm confident uh, that the execution here is uh, going to be as successful as everything we've seen thus far. I only brought up the issue of the stipulation so that if the town goes out to look at it later and they say it doesn't look like what uh, we approved, I don't want there to be an issue. Well, on that vein, Doug, uh, I'm sorry, maybe we should step because he did indicate the preference for the doors, which we didn't have a, a good idea, was similar to the uh, house next door that was approved garage. Do we want to skip that? Well, I think that uh, for the purposes of the record, it may make a sense to say that the garage doors to match the doors on the new garage next door and that the uh, window is uh, a double hung. Um, uh, again, uh, we can consider it as submitted for both of those things. Okay. All right. Um, Thank you. I think that's what Jen was saying. And so as long as our notes uh, with Kim and L Linda are sharp, uh, then uh, we can avoid calling it a step. Is Thank that, you. is everybody feel comfortable with that? Since that's essentially what they submitted. Yeah. So, thank you. So, uh, unless there are any other comments, I will call the vote. All those in favor of the motion to approve as submitted say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted, noting uh, the additional information that came forward when they were submitting it tonight. Uh, application number, sorry. Get back to my agenda. Sorry about that. There we go. Application number 5027-20, Paula Sella. This is the uh, fencing project for the pool on Hartford Avenue. Is there a motion? Move to approve is submitted. Second, please. Second. Thank you, Chris. Discussion, appropriate fence. Uh, appropriate fence for an in-ground pool, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we've seen this kind of fence installed successfully in a number of places, whether it was for backyards or pools. Uh, it has a minimal impact on the district while providing the safe uh, uh, safety for the pool and uh, at, uh, keeping it from being an attractive nuisance. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 5028-20, uh, Tom Derrick. This is the project at 18 Willard Street. And uh, there were uh, a, a couple of changes from uh, the- I'd like to make a motion with stipulations. Sure, that would be great. I, uh, I'll move to approve with the stipulations as follows. One, there'll be no gutter on the front of the house. Two, the windows shall be in black. Three, the back porch and stairs are to match the existing in size and location. And four, there shall be no garage in this application, though the applicant may submit as an amendment if he changes his mind and would like to add a garage. I'll thank second. You. Thank you, Jen, and thank you, Claire. Is there any discussion? We had quite a bit at the time of the application in the public hearing. Um, one Go thing ahead. That, one thing that would be very appropriate for this house, uh, apropos the gutters, is rather than going with K-style, if they went with half-round gutters, 
they would look very appropriate both on the front and the back of the house. It's not what was proposed, but, uh, you know. I think you're uh, right, Vasek, although uh, since we're talking about a gutter that's on the back of the house, the mm -hmm. additional uh, no deal. carrying capacity of the K for the size uh, may be a, attractive. I asked about the rafter tails because, of course, whenever you add gutters to a house uh, of this type, uh, you don't want to detract from uh, that roof line, uh, that roof edge. Uh, I think that, that, that the homeowner would be wise to consider what you've indicated, and we'd certainly, I think, consider a uh, uh, amendment if they wanted to go in that direction. At this point, we did not stipulate whether it was a K or a half round. I don't know if Jen is seeking to do that right now, since uh, we're just saying that it's a gutter and it will only be in the back. I'm not, it's on the back of the house. If he um, prefers the round over the K that he proposed while speaking to us, that would be a very easy amendment. Okay. And it's Kim. Um, in speaking with the applicant in the building department, he did say that he was intending to apply with a K style gutter. Okay, said, so that's that his preference. Evening. Yeah, he said that tonight as well too. Uh, standard standard case size. So I'm fine with that on the back of the house. I don't want to see it on the front. Um, sure. if, he, if he wants something on the front and he would like to propose, as Basic suggested, the round, we could take a look at that. But for now, I think we're good. Thank you very much, Jen, Kim, and Basic, uh, and then Claire for the second. Uh, at this point, uh, have we reached all of the steps that are of concern to folks? I would just note that the black windows are a bit more forgiving. I did not want to force them on a uh, uh, on an installation where it would create too much black, but it sounded like the homeowner was very conscious of trying to create an attractive uh, color combination on the house itself. Um, so I feel rel uh, relatively comfortable embracing his uh, design sense here. Any other uh, comments by any other commissioners? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of the motion to approve with stipulation say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved with stipulations. And I will move to application number 5029-20. Sandra Stavola, the project at 157 Broad Street. Is there a motion? Uh, I'd like to make a motion with the stipulation that the garage window be replaced with a Marvin Elevate. And that's my uh, only stipulation. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, so, uh, Mark, for the second. This is, um, my motion is kind of to spur the discussion quickly. Um, I think that at some point she might feel that she needs to replace other windows in the house. And since we're only talking about the increased cost of one window right now, I'd like to um, have that window be a good tail if it's gonna wag the dog later <laughs> with, a superior, with a superior product, um, which I certainly think that the Elevate is. I really would not want to see that window in the balance of the house in, in that house's location. It's a great piece of property. I'm excited for the renovations. I will say I'm concerned about the vertical vinyl product. I did look at the sample. Um, it, maybe to distinguish it from future projects that come along, I think that the fact that the location of the siding, not on a sunny side of the building, in a shaded area, sort of set back from the main body of the house. I'm willing to give it a shot. We haven't used it as far as I know in the district before, so I'm a little hesitant about how it might come out. I know that that's a quality product in other forms, so I'm hoping that in this form it's also a quality product. 
um, I think that if it were in a sunny, prominent location, I would be worried about it buckling in the heat over time. Um, but you know, it, it's a bit of an experiment. I, I'm interested to see what other people have to say. Well, I would say, uh, Jen, that to a certain extent, I'm influenced by the fact that a majority of the house is already vinyl and vinyl in which you can perceive the curve on the four inch roll. Um, so I think that there's already uh, a certain degree of imperfection in uh, vinyl on the building. Um, and I'm not, and I think that ultimately, you know, this, by the time this part of the vinyl would fail, it would kind of coordinate, it, it would kind of coincide with the failure of the other vinyl. Um, so it's kind of a strange situation where the age of the vinyl that's already there and the fact that there already is vinyl there uh, allows me to uh, embrace the, the use of vinyl in a place where I'd rather just see wood. Uh, it's interesting because it's right next to a farm. Uh, and so there's a lot of visibility. And there's also the idea that it's next to a farm. And so the use of real materials is genuinely, generally one in which I would make the, uh, uh, I would generally fall on the side of that. But I think that the, circ the individual circumstances of this particular house in its particular location um, allow us to make the distinction of why we're, we would consider approving it here. And I do think that although a garage window is one that we usually pay less attention to, uh, this window it will, will be one of just a few that are visible from a very good vantage point. And so if they are not just seeking to fix up the window that's there, I think that you're right, this is a good chance to try to establish a, a good pattern for the rest of the building, which the contractor himself indicated is somewhat of a hodgepodge of windows. So one thing that uh, sort of concerns me about the vinyl that's being proposed is the existing board and batten or the simulated board and batten uh, siding that's on there has nice crisp lines. The corners are right angles. The siding doesn't come anywhere near replicating that to the point where they have curves within the flatness. Um, it's it's so not going to look what like what's there now. It's going to be a very different look. Uh, you're not replicating what's there. Uh, at best, you're dealing with something that's an ersatz replication. And uh, there are, if the homeowners truly feels a need for something that's not going to rot away in the 20 years that she's going to own the house. There are other products that I know of that would also, and I'm sure the contractor knows of these products too, that would give you the nice crisp corners without, and still address the low maintenance aspect of it. That's it. Thank you. That's my for, two bits. Thank you for uh, adding that to the discussion. I mean, in terms of the long runs, uh, I, the longer the run, of course, uh, uh, the chance that if it didn't grab you in a small uh, book, uh, in a 10 foot form, I think, um, you know, I worry about it uh, not executing as, as successfully as you indicate, uh, as, as you think it might. Um, I think that if we, that, I mean, one of the options here, and especially because we have a, a great homeowner and a great contractor, I don't want to impose on them at all, but the only other thing that I could think of is if this motion weren't uh, to fully pass, uh, would be uh, for there to be, uh, uh, to pass it for two weeks to give them some more time to think about whether this is the most successful um, siding. But the only thing I would ask you to consider, Vasek, is what I said before, which is there's already gray vinyl on the house. 
and maybe this is an opportunity to see what gray vertical vinyl would look like um, as well. I would pass on that opportunity, but fortunately for everybody, I'm not voting on this one. <laughs> okay. Doug, is, I, can I interrupt you for one second? Sure, I, Kim. I jumped up to get a file. Did I, I missed that you um, are calling for um, a Marvin Elevate window. Um, was the whole, I, I heard her say that there was a hodgepodge, um, but did she ask for the Marvin Elevate? No, that would be the stipulation from um, the- That's the slippery slope that some of us are willing to go down that was referenced earlier, I guess, when we do dictate uh, types of windows to people that they did not ask for. Kim, if that's what you're asking. I guess that's what I'm asking, thanks. <laughs> There were a number of reasons given why this particular window, um, and, and since there was only one requested that we uh, made the stipulation, um, or, and I should say by the, the person who made the motion, but who I think has the support of the person who seconded it. Um, I, I, at this point, before I go further, is do we have enough comfort to uh, call the vote on what we have here? Uh, or are there more people that want to speak to what Vasek said? If not, then I will call the vote on the motion. Can, can we uh, go over the motion again, please? Sure. Yeah, can you reinstate your motion? Thank you. If you're available, Jen. I'm sorry. Um, no my problem. St my stipulation was that the window be replaced with the Marvin Elevate. And everything else was as submitted? Yes. All right. And, um, and why not the Harvey Magency product? Because this is in a, a white window, is that, would that be that fair was, to say? Uh, to be fair, I think that was one of the reasons. The other was the visibility uh, of it to the, uh, of this house in, in this particular location. Um, the, um, so because of that, we're, we're aware of some of the shortcomings of the uh, Harvey Majesty in white. Uh, and I think that uh, in this particular application, uh, there was some support for uh, a different uh, path. So are you all set, Chris? I, I understand questions? your answer, but is that, Jen, is that, in the who in Claire second is it in the white is that the the opposition to that window the one we just approved in black yeah I think that this window will be a better window if in fact she going forward would like to replace all of the windows in the house and I would have to. Uh, agree you're, with and that. you're certainly free to disagree. I mean, if you. Uh, uh, I was just trying to wonder because again, we we've gone down this road. Obviously, when this comes up in white, and I appreciate, you know, that it, it in the vinyl, it, it may not. It may be a little more glossier than some other products, but it certainly, you know, we've approved it before, and we've approved black and bronze. Uh, I, I just well, want to be clear that that's the sure. uh, the opposition to this garage window is because it's the Harvey Majesty white product. It's well. It's for the to be a little bit more uh, definite. I'll say this, uh, Chris, is that it isn't just that it's white. It's that um, the uh, window doesn't render itself um, with the in the same way that the uh, that the elevate does. And so there are many times when we stipulate a particular window. Um, and in a, in, I'm sorry, Doug, and, I, and you're being very diplomatic, and I appreciate it. But, sure. but I, I just want to understand that it is the first time that I have heard us uh, ask for a specific window over another when options were not presented. I just wanted to be okay. sure. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if it, if it doesn't happen often, but there are many things that we do stipulate. And if well, there's one, yeah, but we've never stipulated uh, one product per se that wasn't even talked about before. So just wanted to be clear. Okay, well, I would say that we are, we, this was a situation where that particular window was known to us because it was part of a different application that was today. So um, at least there was some frame of reference for it to be discussed here tonight. 
in any event, uh, your point is well taken. Uh, at the same time, uh, I'm going to call the vote, I think, unless there's uh, further comment any commissioner wishes to make. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, aye. We have a second aye. Uh, there was a second. I think that was Claire. She can uh, still vote against it. Call yes. the name. No, no, fine. sorry. I, I was fiddling I just, with the mute thing. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, and uh, if in hearing we have three eyes, are there any nays? Nay. Nay for me. Okay. So we have two nays, and those are uh, Raymond and Lyons. Uh, the uh, eyes were Wolf, Mead, and Ovian. Uh, thank you, folks, uh, for your patience, your time tonight, and, uh, and also commissioners uh, for that discussion. At this point, I would like to go to application number, we have just two left. This would be 21 Howard Avenue, number 5030-20, uh, the project for reciting and a few other odds and ends. Is there a motion? I'll make I'll a make... to approve as submitted. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? Perhaps Chris? Second. Thank you, Chris. Uh, any discussion? Uh, this was the subject of a lot of discussion earlier. Uh, it'll give us a standardized uh, look to the building. And uh, that is a good thing on a corner uh, where the property is quite exposed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. No stipulations necessary in that particular one, evidently. Which brings us to the last application. Uh, Doug and Sally Sudell, application number 5031. Uh, it's a amendment changing from Harvey Majesty to Anderson A-Series uh, windows on their addition at 323 Main Street. Already was the subject of some discussion. Is there a motion and a second? Move to approve as submitted. Thank you, Mark. Second? I'll second it. Thank you, Claire. Um, unless there's some discussion, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the amendment is approved as submitted. Thank you so much, folks, for your patience. Just a few more steps in the uh, agenda. Approval of minutes for June 23rd. Linda, thank you uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, do we have all the voters we need for that? We do. Yourself, Jen, Mark, Chris, and Vasek were here. That's great. And my discussion at this time will always be that we greatly appreciate, especially under the conditions of COVID, the efforts of our staff, including Linda and our coordinator, Kim. Thank you very, very much. Also, those who support our work in town government generally, uh, the town manager and the town mayor, uh, both being uh, parts of our ongoing activities here. Uh, so, all those in favor say uh, aye to approve the minutes. Aye. 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 Uh, I'm sorry, I should have uh, asked for I'll a make motion. a motion. Thank you, Chris. Second. And is there a second from Jen? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the minutes are approved. Thank you, folks. Any public comment on general matters of the historic district? Uh, Kim, have you been told of any um, particular public comment? If no. not, then you do you have any report of, as the historic district coordinator? Only to bring up the fact that we should be voting um, since it's the last meeting in, uh, there's one more meeting in July. If you wanna wait until then, um, I'm not sure how attendance will be um, for that last meeting. Oh, for officers? Yes. I, I think that as soon as the status of our uh, uh, alternate Zambrello is confirmed, uh, we'll be able to proceed. Um, and so we should all keep in mind uh, once the word spreads about that issue uh, or whoever has that seat uh, about uh, trying to uh, 
get the best turnout we can for uh, officer voting and uh, any intentions of folks uh, to want to hold officer position that that should be also a matter of uh, thought uh, between now and then uh, and uh, discussion individually. Uh, you can always let Kim know uh, and she can let the rest of us know. So uh, at this point, uh, is there any correspondence? None. Hearing none. Uh, any commissioners have anything else that needs to be said before we adjourn? Hearing none, uh, it's 923. I thank everyone for their patience tonight, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank Second. you, Jen. Second, was that Chris or Mark? Mark. Thank you, Mark. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries, and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, all Thank you, uh, everyone. commissioners, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good Take night. care. Stay safe.